Got to adjust some of these text locations. Uh, but in any case, that's what I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. And Tuesday, probably, I'll be getting the remainder of the parts, which will mainly be a, a, a thermocouple, a K type thermocouple. It's mechanically better than this. Uh, my uh, my thermocouple consisted of me welding a piece of chromel alumel wire together with an oxyacetylene torch, and obviously that is not going to connect to my wood stove very well. So I uh, ordered one that has a little screw fitting on it that I can screw into the stack. And the final piece I need is the um, the linear motor for the draft. Um, let me, I'll, I'm going to show you guys what that stove looks like. Alright, you can see your basic standard damper here. Let's see if I can hold the light and show you this thing at the same time, but basically uh, full open, full closed. So um, my servo rotates 300 degrees, this rotates 90, so I will have a little, I think it's a two and a half to one chain drive on it. I'm going to mount the, the little servo back here and put the chain up to it so the heat doesn't kill it. Here's the Here's the draft. And basically what this is, is that's full uh, full blast open and that's full shut. It's a two inch throw on it. Basically this is a little slide in the bottom of the stove. I might be able to get a picture of that. Yeah, you can kind of see it. This just opens and closes here, so we'll uh, we'll be putting a linear motor on that one. Hopefully, I can build it underneath the stove, keep it away from the heat. You know, the stove doesn't get too too hot on the bottom. I mean, it's going pretty good right now. Stacks up at uh, I don't know, three hundred or something. And, uh, you know, I can put my hand on here, no problem, so, you know, I'll put a little thermal insulation on there, but, you know, I don't think I have to get too exotic with that. So, uh, yeah, that's what it's going to do, and, you know, tomorrow we're going to start off, uh, or uh, Tuesday, rather, which is, this is Sunday, or Saturday night, when the, Mr. Brown comes and gives me my servo, we'll hook it up, it's intelligent, so just feed PWM into the thing, and feed 12 volts into it, and 50% duty cycle, put it at 1 inch, 100% duty cycle, puts it at 2 inches. I've already got that software written, so, you know, it'll be pretty quick. I mean, the next hardest part of this thing is going to be, uh, Attaching the servos up to it so that it, you know, can drive it and not melt. So, uh, you know, not look like some Rube Goldberg contraption that's going to look ridiculous. You know, I, uh, you know, I'll probably, what I'm probably going to end up doing here is kludging something up for testing. And then uh, the end of burn season... Um, I don't know if you can see this. I got this flashlight here because it's kind of dark, but this pipe in the bottom, it's a three-foot section of stuff. And um, I'll probably just get a whole new damper assembly and a new pipe. The stuff's cheap, 10 bucks or something. And uh, I'm going to extend this shaft here. It sticks out. 
maybe another inch and put a sprocket on it. Unfortunately I can't do that now because I have to take the stove apart and I like to be warm so I'll probably attach the kludge to this side of it temporarily but uh, next year it'll be a little less crappy. And one final shot. I don't know the sprockets for it yet, but got this piece of stainless chain here. I think it's 250 pitch. Um, debating on what, you know, this is what I had laying around in my shop. I got like 20 feet of this junk. But it's a little heavy. You know, I, this servo here is pretty damn powerful, but you can see that this chain just kind of looks out of proportion to it. I think they make like a 143 chain or something that's a little smaller than this. So I'm gonna look into that. I'm I'm shocked at how powerful this little servo is. It's it's insane. It it puts out like a 100 and, 120 inch pounds or something like that. So uh you know I can just bolt a a sprocket to this uh, face plate here or whatever the heck it is and uh, I'm confident it will drive it. I mean this servo is amazing for like forty dollars things got thermal overload protection got it's it has torque sensing it has uh, variable torque it has angle feedback the way I'm driving it is uh you know, it goes from zero to a thousand twenty-four counts, and so that's how I'm sending data to it. You know, I calculate a position with a map function and just send it to it. But you know, you can you can talk to this thing and send it angles and rates. It does trapezoidal motion control profiling. I mean, obviously, that's way more sophisticated than what I need to close a damper and open a damper. But, um, you know, I, what the heck, man, 40 bucks. I mean, if I put a stepper motor on there, it'd cost me the same amount. So 40 bucks I spent on this little weenie. It's only one inch, like one inch by two inch cube. But it, you know, it has a 266 to one gear ratio in it. And uh, I was a little leery, you know, this is the $40 model. And um, it's got plastic gears in it. Um, the uh, they have one that's a little more expensive that has metal gears in it. But I figured, you know, I've got the torque sensing capability in this thing. You can set torque limits and stuff. And so, you know, if something happens, if the thing jams, it's not going to tear the gear train apart. So I went, what the heck, you know? I'll go with the plastic and. You know, see what they see what they do about it. You know, I mean, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, this is the first time I ever used one of these little miniature smart servos, is what they call them at Robot Shop. Um, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm sure that I'm sure that this has enough torque to turn that, and I'm sure that the uh, the linear motor has enough torque to uh, to drive that that uh, the draft shaft there, so let me see here. Yeah. I'll show you something else. You can see the. Um, lights, you know, transmit, receive, transmit, receive. So you can see it is sending packets bi directionally. You know, these XBs are uh, pretty cool little devices. They, um, you got to program them, and, and that's not easy. You've got all this mesh network stuff you got to deal with and, and all that, but once you get them programmed, um, this one I have programmed as the coordinator and this one I have 
programmed as an end AT and whatever you call it there and um, so now they talk to each other and once you get them going all you gotta do is supply them with three volts and uh, serial data it's kinda almost like a an RF mo well it is an RF modem really it, that's, that's what it is and they do work and with these little little tiny tiny antennas they talk to each other for at least 40 feet really well. I mean, I'm running them at 9600 baud. I'm sure I could run them faster than that. They they will go up to 115 kilobaud, but you know, since my data rates are so slow, I mean, this controller sends I think it's 23 bytes over to this guy and this guy responds with like 128 bytes or something like that because it's got a lot of other stuff it's got to send back as far as status and and other temperatures it's got you know it's sending back all these percentages and everything so um you know 9600 seems to be great and you know my my poll rate's about a hertz so uh you know that's plenty fast enough for the wood stove i mean you know you know i could put this uh thermocouple on my on my on my uh solder and I and and heat it up you know to, to 500 degrees in a second um, you know when it's hooked up to the wood stove it's nothing's gonna change that fast unless the house is burning down so I don't think uh, my data rates are gonna be a problem here anyways um once I get this thing hooked up to the stove uh, I'll show you guys what really happens is and so that'll be kind of fun. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.